Morning guys, it's just gone six o'clock on a Thursday morning. Now, Patriot Campers are pretty well known for all the toys and the gear that we produce. And earlier on this year, I was at Overland Expo East and I saw something there that I just absolutely fell in love with and I knew I had to have one. Today I'm going to give you a run through what Sherp is all about, why we brought them here into Australia and the big, big plans that we have for the future for these bad boys. So we've just arrived at our secret testing location. On this property, there's a little bit of everything. There's boulders, there's trees, there's a big dam all the way down the back there, but on the way in, the dam doesn't have a lot of water in it, so I don't know whether we're gonna get these things fully floating today, but the whole purpose of today is really to see what these things are actually capable of. I've watched all the videos, seen all the YouTube stuff, but now we're gonna experience it firsthand. We'll roll them off real quick. What I'll do is I'll give you a quick walk around on the basic fundamentals of the Sherp and what it's all about and then we're going to go and have some fun. Recent trip to the United States, I finally got the opportunity to take a Sherp for a drive and see one in the flesh. Instantly, I was hooked. We've been negotiating the Sherp in the Ukraine and Patriot Campers are now officially the distributor for Australia and New Zealand. Now I know everybody's thinking, the number one question is definitely gonna be why. Why Sherp? Well, I think that there's three main reasons. Number one, they're just cool. Who wouldn't want one? If you're into touring in Australia and you've been in the situation where you've been in a remote location and you just can't access where you need to go because of the terrain, the Sherp's definitely gonna get you there. Number two, I see a massive commercial opportunity for Sherp back home in Australia for industries like mining, environmental, rescue and emergency services. Being that we can access in areas such as floods, if you look back to the 2011 Brisbane floods, which were really recent, imagine if we had a couple of Sherps that could get in there and do the jobs that no other vehicle can do. Thirdly, the Sherp just complements our range of unstoppable products. Patriot Campers is all about exploring the remote and the Sherp it's gonna get you that little bit further. We also now have the facilities at Patriot Campers to handle the next product. The manufacturing techniques between the Sherp and the Patriot range of camper trailers specifically is so similar. We have the advantage that we have dealers right around the country that can handle the sales and the servicing that any customer may require. Now let's get into it. Let's have a look around at what these Sherps are all about. You can't miss when you look at the Sherp for the first time, and that's why I'm going to start here, the massive 63 inch tyres. Now, the tyres is what the Sherp is all about. This is their proprietary design and manufacturing technique that nobody else in the world has. And I'll run you through a couple of um, pretty astonishing facts when it comes to the tyres. Like I said, 63 inches tall, there's not many places 
uh, that this thing won't go. Each tire holds a volume of 800 litres inside each one of these. Funnily enough, people think the amphibious capability of the Sherp is due to the tires, but that's actually not true. The Sherp will still float with the tires off. But what they do have on the tires is these massive deep treads, these paddles, which will propel the Sherp through water and any wading depth uh, at a speed of about six kilometers an hour. Now, inside the tires, one of the real clever innovations is they've utilized that massive area of the galvanized wheel to house extra diesel. The diesel that can be held by the Sherp is 56 litres in the standard tank and each one of these wheels will hold another 58 litres of diesel, which is tonnes more than enough that you'll need uh, for any trip. The other uh, big, big part of the Sherp is the actual tyre pressure. Now the tyre pressure on the Sherp, it runs so low that it's measured in millimetres of mercury. It's not measured in PSI or bar conventionally you do with the tyre. You will run these tyres at a maximum of 2 PSI. Generally speaking, depending on the terrain that you're in, uh, you'll run them around sort of 1 PSI, but they're also a self-inflating tyre. And how Sherp have cleverly designed this is by a diverter valve using the exhaust gas. So you can switch the valve over, and what that'll do is divert the exhaust from exiting the side of the vehicle straight into the tyres. And that's what's inflating the tyres. If you get off the gas, it'll deflate the tyres. You can go from dead flat in the Sherp to full pressure, which is 160 millimetres of mercury in 28 seconds. So on the move, doesn't matter the terrain, how much it changes, you've got everything controlling your fingertips. So that right there is the number one feature of the Sherp. Now, I'll talk to you about quickly dimensions on the Sherp. The Sherp weighs in at 1.3 tonne. It's a lot lighter than it actually looks, which means you can put it on a single axle trailer. It measures 2.5 metres wide, which is dead on legal for towing it on Australian roads, 3.4 metres long and 2.5 metres high. We'll move around to the front and we'll get underneath and I'll show you the chassis that connects all of this together. Starting with the main frame, or I suppose you call it the chassis of the shirt. You can see underneath here, this is all uh, a steel chassis which is hot dip galvanised, but it's not your standard steel, it's called a docol steel. It has a yield strength of 1000 MPa. Now to put that in perspective, a drawbar on a camper trailer like what we would manufacture has a yield strength of 350 MPa. So this steel here is about three times stronger and the reason for that is that skid pan underneath uh, the base of the Sherp, and you can see it's flat all the way through, is designed purely for abuse. Crawling over rocks, uh, going over the top of trees, um, any, anything that you can actually throw at it. Now I mentioned it before with the tyres, the Sherp is a fully amphibious vehicle and the reason it was designed as amphibious they're designed in Russia and the Ukraine uh, for terrain um, that is minus 40 degrees, uh, ice sheets, frozen over lakes, uh, where the Sherp has every opportunity to crush through a lake and it continue on moving uh, inside of a frozen lake, climb in and out of the ice or snow as deep as it possibly likes. Now, how that kind of applies to what we're doing here in Australia, um, the northern parts of Australia during the wet season are completely inaccessible. The only way that you can do it during the wet or in the runoff um, is by air. That's the only way that you can access most of the places that I've been to and a lot of the top of Australia. So fundamentally that design I think is perfectly suited uh, amongst other things for that type of touring and that type of travel. We'll open up parts of Australia all year round that you wouldn't be able to access any other time. One of the things that really got me about the Sherp is how environmentally friendly it actually is. And you might hear that and look at this and go, what the hell is this guy talking about? Because of the size and the volume of the tyres, the pounds per square inch pressure that these tyres put on the ground is less than a human footprint. So if you imagine a human tr uh, trudging through a uh, environmentally sensitive area, the Sherp is going to leave less of a footprint on that area, which is going to open it up to environmental services. The whole cabin is completely sealed uh, for obvious reasons. It's an amphibious vehicle and like I stated before, even if you remove the tyres, this cab will still float. The ground clearance of the Sherp is 600 millimetres at full inflation of the tyres. So there's not a lot that you're not going to get over and especially with the, the wheelbase being so close together. But even if you do, like I said before, that Docol steel 
it's going to take a lot to um, to damage that skid pan. The main body on the Sherp is all aluminium. Uh, it's Raptor coated and like the design of the Patriot campers, the aluminium is non-corrosive uh, but it helps to keep that tear weight right down. One of the standard fittings that we're going to be bringing in on all Australian model Sherps is the ROPS. Now the ROPS protection and the Sherp from a safety perspective and again that body being aluminium uh, is something that we're going to implement as standard. Another one of the features that you can get is you can get a tow hitch uh, that we fitted to both of these ones that you see here today. They will carry up to one tonne. There is also the option from Sherp to buy Sherp specific trailers. So they're amphibious trailers fitted with the same tyres. So if you need to carry a little bit more uh, cargo or for the general application that you might be using uh, to suit your business or commercial application, there is a host of options available. Make sure you check out the website. Uh, what we'll do now is we'll jump up into the back and let's have a look through the rear cabin inside the shirt. The access from the rear is very similar to the front. You have a big glass window. Uh, the gas struts are a little bit over pressured and I think that's intentional so you, again you can keep them open for ventilation. You've got a tailgate at the back. Again, very similar to the back of a Patriot camper in functionality. This doubles as a table but this is your main access. To climb up into the back of the Sherp and we'll have a look in what's in the rear cabin. We've stripped out the interior uh, to expose the mechanical system inside the Sherp. And this is the thing that really got me when I, I laid eyes on one of these in the flesh for the first time. The design is utilizing um, some really, really genius simplicity when it comes to mechanics. Now at the heart of the whole thing is a 1.5 litre turbo diesel Kubota motor, which makes about 44 horsepower. Now, if you come from an agricultural kind of background, you know Kubota is one of the, the biggest manufacturers of agricultural engines in the world, if not uh, probably the biggest. They're a Japanese made motor and it's coupled to a five speed transmission. So all spare parts are currently already available here in Australia. There are Kubota dealers anywhere around Australia. Now, behind that transmission, you've got a chain drive system and it's a, this is where it gets really simple and very, very clever. The chain drive system uh, locks either side of the wheels of the Sherp. So fundamentally, once you let the clutch out, you've got a constant drive. What's turning the vehicle is hydraulic brake calipers, which I'm sitting on right now. You can see one poking through here. When you pull on uh, the opposite side lever, it'll lock up one side and it'll skid steer exactly the same as a Bobcat. The chain drive system, all of the gearing that goes with it, all the spare parts, we are holding at Patriot HQ. So should anything ever go wrong, um, we have a, a massive inventory of parts. If not, we can get express shipping, but we can get these things serviced anywhere in Australia. The service intervals, they run at 50 and 100 hours. 50 hours is a minor. Any mechanic or any, any sort of uh, agricultural equipment mechanic can do that 50 hour interval check. But the 100 hours, we can even fly out one of the technicians from Patriot HQ to any location, uh, be it fleet or a one-off service, and they can service this vehicle for you. Now, another thing worth noting, and Sherp have thought about all of these types of things because these are designed for remote travel. The electrical system in the Sherp runs completely independently. So as long as you've got enough charge in one of your batteries, we're bringing them in with dual batteries, and you can start the engine. Say you got a complete flood or something like that happened or you had an electrical failure, it's not gonna affect the drive. You can still get the thing back home. And, and that's something um, that's really big for me. Very high quality parts. Uh, all of this is enclosed, uh, sitting on that Dokol steel uh, chassis that I explained a little bit earlier before. Hot dip galvanized. Um, it's, it's just an amazing bit of engineering because of the simplicity. And that's something from my background that I absolutely love. So, Sherp service, warranty, spare parts, availability, now completely controlled from Patriot HQ and available anywhere in Australia. The interior of the rear cabin of the Sherp is a deceivingly large space. Now, I'll run you through how I'm gonna set mine up personally. How we're gonna bring all of these Sherps into Australia is fundamentally exactly what you see here. The storage boxes that run along the back, they double as the rear seats and you've got grab handles here for another four passengers. So four in the back, two in the front, total of six people in the Sherp. Uh, depending on the size of the trip, you might wanna pull that back a little bit, or the gear that you're carrying in the back. 
All of the material that you see around the Sherp has really two functions. It's a core durable material. Number one function is it's noise deadening and insulating for inside of the cabin. Number two, it's a very high wear resistant fabric. It's a military grade fabric. On the Cordura, you'll see on these panels on the side, we have the Molly system. Now, if you're not familiar with Molly, Molly is another very versatile system that's heavily used throughout militaries around the world, but you're seeing a lot more common in touring and overlanding vehicles because there's so many products now that are developed uh, to plug straight into the Molly system. And depending on what gear you want to carry, whether that's medical or hunting equipment or electronic equipment, the Molly system will generally handle it. You can see you've got two stretchers in the back here as well. Um, we had the kids up in here earlier on today. I've had a good lie down in there. What I'm going to do personally is I'm going to carry two of the Sea to Summit uh, air self-inflating mattresses. Those self-inflating mattresses on here, that would be an awesome place to sleep. Um, you wouldn't have a problem sleeping two people up in there. Now, there is a couple of different options and to, and to get some people's minds thinking. Sherp offer at the moment a recovery system as an option uh, to the back of this vehicle, which involves a stretcher and some other storage for medical equipment. So that kind of gets the brain thinking as to what can be done in the back here. Now for emergency services, uh, which I think is going to be a, a very large market for us with the shirt product here over the next couple of years, um, we can fit it out with stretches, but we can go further than that. With the advantages of manufacturing that we have back at Patriot HQ and the gear that we produce, we are very familiar with all of these electrical systems. Air conditioning is definitely an option. Lithium batteries, full red arc suites, 240 volt power. So depending on the application that you have for, you know, be it for mining, search and rescue, medical, whatever that application may be, we can tailor make a solution to suit your specific application with the blank canvas that we currently have in the back of the shirt. Lastly, I'll just touch on storage. You've got tons of storage underneath the floor, big tub in the center, one in the rear. Um, they've made good use of everywhere throughout the shirt. There is pockets for all uh, type of gear and the cargo nets that you see hanging from the roof uh, and on the sides, they come as standard as well. So once again, if you have a specific application, contact the sales team and we're happy to discuss it with you. Main access to the Sherp is through the front. Typically speaking, when you're driving around for ventilation, you'll leave that top hatch open. You've got a bottom hatch, and one of the options that we're fitting to all of the Australian models is this handy little step. Uh, but you can just jump straight up into the front, into the driver's seat, passenger can follow, and you can put more passengers in the back. In the cockpit of the Sherp, uh, one of the things I love about it is everything is where it needs to be. The, everything is at your fingertips. The driving position is really, really comfortable. Um, clutch on the left, throttle on the right, the five-speed transmission here, and these are your two skid steers. So the levers, you've kind of got this nice armrest up here. Um, you can actuate left and right really quite simply, but I'll just run you through the fundamentals of, of what you need to know inside of a Sherp. Got ignition down here, we've optioned in the dual battery, so we have a second battery switch just down the bottom here, should we ever kill the main house battery. Uh, you've got an emergency shutdown uh, for the engine, and you've got a park brake here as well for when you're parked. All of the switches on the dash control all of your standard sort of stuff, indicators, headlights, interior uh, lights, and all the rest of it. But where it kind of starts getting a little bit interesting in the shirt, you've got a digital gauge up here, which is coupled up to this analog gauge, which measures the tire pressure in millimeters of mercury. Now, the reason that they go millimeters of mercury is because maximum tire pressure in the Sherp is two PSI, um, and you can drop them down to, inflate them down to absolutely nothing. The way that you do that is just underneath me down here, I've got a valve, I turn that valve. What that valve does is it bypasses the exhaust uh, to pump the air into the tires, throttle up, and it'll fill the tires from dead flat to full in 30 seconds. You've got an hour meter here, uh, your battery voltage, engine temperature, your fuel, uh, handy reverse camera. You don't have a great view of what's going on outside. You can't even uh, get your head uh, through the side windows. So you're looking at the back or relying on the reverse camera. 
And another thing that I love about it is it's um, it's very, very airy in here as well. You've got a big hatch in the top which lets airflow in, uh, windows on the sides, hatch in the front where you typically drive with it open until you get into water, and the back window as well which allows air to filter all the way through it. So all in all, very, very comfortable cockpit. You could spend days inside this thing. Safety wise, in the cockpit of the Sherp, you feel very, very secure. You've got seatbelt restraints for the driver and the passenger, uh, but most importantly, the main hoop of the ROPS runs straight over the top um, of the head of the driver and the passenger. So it, it does feel very, very secure. It does feel safe. You know, you are driving these things on water. You have multiple places to exit the vehicle. Should you have to, you can get out through the roof, out the front, or climb out through the back. Very well thought out, very well rounded out cockpit. Uh, and this is a place that I'm looking forward to spending a lot of time on some of our adventures around Australia. One of the things I haven't touched on is the range of the Sherp. Now, full of diesel with all the wheels full and the main tank, you're holding 300 litres. That Kubota motor at max RPM will shoot three litres per hour. You've got 100 hours of travel time. Now, if you put that down into days, if you look at, say, traveling eight hours a day, that is a lot of exploration that you can do with the fuel that's on board. And there's a run through the Sherp that is now available in Australia. There is a million different options that are available for the Sherps, from colors to different fit outs. You need to jump on the website or contact one of our sales team at Patriot HQ to discuss your requirements and make sure you keep an eye out in the next season of Patriot Games where you're gonna see this thing fully put to the test.